Good morning, folks. We've got a continuation of the climate stories. We get an interesting discovery about the moon, and I discuss your doubts about Earth's rotation glitches. But we're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the sun was mostly quiet the last day. But that didn't exactly translate to quiet back here on Earth. You see the dark coronal holes turning, and the enhanced solar wind from them has begun to arrive. Right side of the chart, fluctuations are the impacting stream. So far, no geomagnetic storm, but we've got a couple days of enhanced streams coming here. We are also keeping an eye on the north. Incoming. Solid umbral magnetic field arches at the limb suggest sunspots are sitting beneath them. We'll see here tomorrow. So folks, the increasing fastest predicted day of the year based on the dynamic algorithm got knocked off the charts again, back to July having already been the fastest day of the year. Yes, it is supposed to change daily, but by tiny little jumps, not these big ones. You can check the past data, or you can check how the model works. Didn't happen in the past, shouldn't happen now. What we keep seeing is about as real looking as this. Either they are indeed wiping the data or the fluctuations of Earth's rotation speed are actually dinging back and forth so much, we're in bigger trouble than I thought. Moon magnetism, maybe not. They found several samples with no magnetization and others with magnetization that looks to be introduced into the sample rapidly rather than being a remnant magnetization from the moon's field itself. They look at asteroids and comets as examples, but don't restrict the inflictor, and we know that such a field would get induced by a major solar blast as well. Key finding, hidden in the impactor category. Folks, leave it to nature. This article is about the same IPCC report Vucin exposed a few days ago, but it tells a very different story. Fear, heat, it's all our fault. It's like this article and Vucin's were discussing two different things. I guess we'll have to wait and see the actual report. Or not, because in addition to the last two days hitting pretty much our entire climate list, except for B1 volcanoes, let's go ahead and hit B1 volcanoes. New study out of Cambridge shows that whether it's a big one or lots of smaller ones, volcanoes can quickly take over this planet and send us back into an ice age. And why don't we go ahead and get some perspective on volcanoes? It'll be a review for you veterans out there. This is the chart that climate scientists use to judge how much volcanic cooling we're getting. It matches the timeline they use for global temperatures. The problem is, this doesn't show you what volcanoes really do. Our government also has this chart, which goes into archaeomagnetic studies, and that green bracketed area on the right, in the time of climate science, those are the spikes we saw on that other chart. That's a big problem of data inclusion, or lack thereof, when it comes to the climate models. On this broader look at the data, clearly, our planet takes much greater inundations from the volcanoes. There are no VEI-8s on this list or surges like was described by Cambridge. The volcanoes right now are at the near record low forcing marks for the last millennium, and that can't last forever. We greatly appreciate your support. Great article by Cambridge there if you're looking to pick one of the links to read today. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.